My name is Eva Moore, and I will be arguing in support of the Black Sea Flood Hypothesis. My name is Madison, and I'm going to be arguing against the Black Sea Deluge Hypothesis. Okay, so the Black Sea Deluge Hypothesis uh, was proposed in 1997 by marine geologists William B. F. Ryan and Walter C. Pittman of Columbia University. According to Ryan and Pittman, a large flood that occurred about 7,200 years ago altered the Black Sea, filling more than 100,000 square kilometers of its continental shelf. Originally, the Black Sea was a freshwater lake filled by melting glaciers from the last ice age almost 12,000 years ago. According to Ryan, as is found in the nearby Caspian Sea, a warmer climate was correlated with lower lake levels but higher ocean levels. The Black Sea had shrunk to its outer shelf and possibly even beyond as Earth's climate was warming. On the other hand, the levels of the Mediterranean Sea were rising, causing water levels to rise in the Sea of Marmara and the Bosphorus Strait. And finally, water levels spilled out of the Bosphorus, uh, flooding the basin of the Black Sea with salt water. This caused the Black Sea water levels to rise six inches a day. So the flooding of the Black Sea would have resulted in many coastal farms being flooded, which would cause people to migrate away from the area. This in turn could help explain uh, the spread of certain languages and cultures, as well as the rapid advance of farming technologies um, along nearby river, river valleys. And further, these migrating people could bring their story of the flood to whatever region they settled. Besides the connection to Noah's flood, the story of a large flood is found in many other cultures. For instance, Greek mythology includes a tale about a flood, and the Epic of Gilgamesh, which is found in ancient Mesopotamian literature, also recounts a large flood. So, there are four main pieces of evidence presented with Ryan and Pittman's original hypothesis, uh, several of which refer to work done by other scientists in the 70s. So the first piece of evidence, um, number one, during an expedition between the U.S. and Russia in 1993, Ryan and Pittman surveyed regions of the outer continental shelf of the Black Sea. They found evidence suggesting that vast regions of the Black Sea's continental, continental shelf were submerged simultaneously. The second piece of evidence, in 1973, Shimkus et al. reported on a sudden migration of non-native marine organisms. Number three, in 1972, Dagan and Ross reported a large decrease in the rate of sediment accumulation. And finally, four, in 1994, Jones and Gagnon found evidence of a sudden appearance of, or, of an organic-rich sediment called sapropel at every depth. And taken together, these four pieces of evidence would all support the idea of a catastrophic flood. So although the Black Sea Deluge hypothesis was a very widely recognized hypothesis, a newer hypothesis was proposed by A. L. Chapaliga. Also, Valentino Yanko Hombach, who is currently the head of the Department of Physical and Marine Geology at the Odessa National University in Ukraine, is another scientist who has done extensive research on this topic. In 2007, she released a scientific volume that included 35 different papers by an international group of Black Sea scientists, and this um, volume also included her own research. This debate is not over whether or not the flood happened, but the magnitude of the flood and how quickly that it occurred. Valentino Yanko Hambach hypothesized that it was a much more gradual flood and not all of a sudden as in the previous hypothesis. The glaciers that melted filled the Pontiac Basin for thousands of years, dispersing tribes along the shoreline. This water then flowed into the Bosphorus, and then as the fresh water mixed with salt water, it formed the Black Sea. This hypothesis states that this would have occurred in a late Pleistocene era. Along with this hypothesis, it is said that the water flow through the Bosphorus would reverse depending on the water level of the Aegean Sea relative to the Black Sea. The geological evidence that the flood occurred is very sound. There is not enough evidence to prove the scale that Ryan and Pittman claim. The other hypothesis talks about one great sudden flood, 
which is generally associated today with Noah's flood. It has even been said by Dr. Andrew M. T. Moore, who is an archaeologist and the Dean of Liberal Arts at the Rochester Institute of Technology, that the large claim connecting the Black Sea flood and Noah's flood can no longer be sustained due to the new evidence that have been found over the past years. It has also been found that there was a substantial sea level increase in the Pontiac Basin during the late Pleistocene and that there is not significant evidence from geological data to show an early Holocene catastrophic flood. And according to Ryan and Pittman, um, it would have been the early Holocene era where this flood would have occurred. There have also been underwater canyons found that show that they were naturally formed and not created by a large flood. A study from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute found evidence that the Black Sea water levels only rose five to 10 meters around 9,400 years ago and not the 50 to 60 meters as the previous hypothesis had predicted. This would have only drowned about 2,000 square kilometers as opposed to the previously thought of 70,000 square kilometers. With this hypothesis, it contradicts the catastrophic break of the Bosphorus, which the other hypothesis is based upon. Okay, so although Ryan and Pittman's hypothesis has been challenged by many, other researchers have performed tests that further support the Black Sea Deluge hypothesis. According to Ballard et al., a 1999 survey performed by the Institute of Exploration was carried out with the express purpose of testing Ryan and Pittman's hypothesis. Using a boat equipped with standard echo sonar, they examined an area off the northern coast of Turkey. They found the ancient shoreline at about 150 meters deep. The survey also found that the shoreline features suggested that the flood of the Black Sea was indeed sudden and continuous. On other continental shelves, that have sh um, on other seas that have shown evidence of gradual flux fluctuations in water levels, their shoreline characteristics were different than what was found on this expedition. Also, in 2003, Ryan published a review of the literature published in response to his hypothesis. He addressed some concerns put forth by other scientists and called for more in-depth research to be done um, to look into the, some of the shelf unconformities, as he asserted that some of the unconformities suggest the Black Sea's water levels were substantially low. He continued to contend that rising and falling of Black Sea's water levels were controlled by the climate and that the Black Sea reacted similar to the Caspian Sea. He also pointed to modern day evidence if today's sea levels rose 25 meters, there would be a catastrophic flood from the Black Sea to the Caspian Sea. Then would it be so unreasonable to believe that such a, ca such a catastrophic flood could have occurred in the Black Sea itself these uh, thousands of years ago? So the IGCP 521 project was created to study the change of the Black Sea. So three conferences were held um, to begin this project, and they brought together geologists, climatologists, and archaeologists during a period of about 2005 to 2009. It was determined at these conferences that there was no evidence of catastrophic flooding during the early Holocene era, and there was no significant changes in population during this time as well. This showed that there was no support for a sudden massive flood. It was also concluded in these conferences that the water level in the Black Sea rose gradually in an oscillating manner of about three centimeters per 100 years, as compared to the 15 centimeters per day of the other previous hypothesis. The sea level increase of this level would not have forced the dispersal of the people living in this area, contradicting the Ryan and Pittman hypothesis. Dr. Albert Amerman, who is an archeologist of the Colgate University also showed that there is a 200 year discrepancy between the time of the Black Sea flood and the earliest evidence of settlements in central Hungary. So this shows that there is a bit of a time difference between Ryan and Pittman's hypothesized time frame and when the actual flood really occurred. Although the Black Sea flood hypothesis has not been well accepted uh, years following due to extensive publications, most notably uh, Janko Hombach's, arguing for a much less catastrophic event, 
A recent study gave moderate support to the Black Sea Deluge hypothesis. In 2010, Nick Tom, an engineering professor at the University of Nottingham, published a review of the literature that had been published since um, Wright and Pittman's hypothesis was published. His work simulates a hydrological model that, com that compares the parallels in the water levels of the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. He also compared sediments, salinities, and rainfall patterns of the two seas. The simulation gave moderate support to the Black Sea Deluge hypothesis. Although Tom was hesitant to fully support the Black Sea Deluge hypothesis, he admitted that two major anomalies still existed that could not be explained by his model or opponents of Ryan's hypothesis. These um, anomalies were, number one, the sudden formation of Sapropel along, along with the appearance of the Mediterranean fauna, and number two, massive erosion and spillway between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. So although many are not convinced by the Black Sea flood hypothesis, Tom's research shows the alternate hypotheses do not adequately address all of the evidence either. This is especially so since the first anomaly he mentioned pertains to two of the four pieces of evidence presented in Ryan and Pittman's original hypothesis. So in reaction to the assumption that the Black Sea was about 80 meters lower than the Black Sea today, it is proven that since sand deposits are eroded by currents, they can be mistakenly interpreted as dunes or beaches. So this makes them an unreliable source of the indicator of sea levels. Also, a scientist named Livio Giosan of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute dated only bivalve shells that have both halves attached, when previously they have been dating shells that just have um, one side of the shell attached. So by doing this, it indicated that the animals with the bivalve shells, they died in the layer at the same time um, that it was created and they were not moved by waves. So by using this dating technique, these researchers became confident that the Black Sea was around 30 meters lower than the present at the time of the flood. So this meant that the flood would only have rose 5 to 10 meters of the water level. The late Pleistocene flood scenario has a much stronger geological evidence, as well as archaeological evidence, that flooding did not have a large impact on humans of this time. There is not a diff definitive answer, however, for how the flooding of the Black Sea occurred, but I believe that this hypothesis is much more supported. But still much more research still needs to be done on this topic. So thank you guys all for watching. I hope that you learned a lot about this topic and you are now able to make your own de decisions about whose hypothesis you really believe. Thanks for watching. <laughs>